Happy New Year! Welcome everyone to SIM English Worship Service. Now is 2021, January 3rd, the first Sunday, Lord's Day, and then we can celebrate welcoming this year. We have announcement from tomorrow and the following day, the 4th and 5th, we have English Bible Reading Club. We're going to read Mark, Hebrew, Lamentation, and Colossians. So please join in. The materials are in English and I'll uh, preside over in Korean. So you can join in. Okay, today I'd like to share today's prayer point from Open Doors. The title is stripped of her, home, her name for choosing Jesus. The North Korean regime uses a brutal and widespread prison system as a fear tactic. Anyone who is discovered to be a Christian is quickly removed from society and sent to detention centers. Detention camps, re-education camps, and maximum security hard labor prison camps. One North Korean prison camp survivor shares, The name I was born with in North Korea was the first thing they took away. Every morning they call me for 42. Remember that the ask God to turn the hearts of North Korean leaders from stone to flesh as he did to Pharaoh. Let's pray. Remembering these prayer points on the on North Korea. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Oh God, we pray for North Korean brothers and sisters. Their names are stripped away when they're found that they're Christian. But Lord, our name in you, our identity as your children cannot be stripped away, cannot be taken away. Lord, that surety, that confirmation, Lord, let's reveal that to our brothers and sisters in the North. Let's continue to pray. Let's pray for full dependence on God under all circumstances. Let's pray for comfort and help of God for all the affected countries and areas so that we can welcome spiritual revival on our generation and for the next. Let's pray and bless the next generation. Let's pray together.
Oh God, things are turning into different phase. Now, Lord, Korea, the soul, the greater soul is going through this rampant um, confirmed cases. Lord, even so, don't let us tumble down because we are standing on the everlasting rock and foundation. Lord, let us go forward. Let us experience the comfort and help. Holy Spirit is always with us as promised. Lord, thank you for your presence. Let's, let's pray one more time for the last. Let's pray for all of us to encourage one another in love and care. Let us stay. Let's live in the love of God. Let's pray for Sodemon Church and SIM English Worship. And let's pray for all the faith group and church, the small group they're attending to, and you're for your family, for your community and locality and the area that you live in. The peace of God will be working through all the generation and all the people so that we can experience God. Let's pray together. Let's go to the Lord. Oh God, we give thanks to you because you are the source of love and care. Father God, we give glory to you. We worship you. Father God, bless every faith group and small group that we gather under the name of you. Lord, let us be lifted up high. Your name, only your name be lifted up high. Lord, what can I say? Because we offer our heart to you, only to you, completely. Lord, we gather here to worship online. So, wherever we are, whenever it is, Lord, we believe that you are with us. And open our hearts to listen the word of life so that we can be revived in you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I welcome once again to the worship service. And yes, tomorrow and the day after, we have... Bible Reading Club, please apply that. And you can go to our website and you can write the application. Okay. Today, the title is Rich, and Rich in Faith While Poor in the World. We'll continue our study into James, today's fourth series. And passage from chapter 2 verses 1 through 7. I'll read it for you from verse 1. My Christian friends, you must be kind to everyone. You trust the Lord Jesus Christ who is great in heaven. So do not think that anyone is more valuable than any other person. When you are meeting together as believers, maybe two men will come to join with you. One of them is wearing beautiful clothes and he has gold rings on his hands. The other man is poor and he is wearing old clothes who is wearing beautiful clothes. You say to him, please sit here in this good place. But you say to the poor man, go and stand over there. Or you may say to him, sit on the floor near my feet. If you do that, you are thinking bad thoughts. You have decided that one person among you is better than another person. You must not do that. My Christian friends, listen to me. God has chosen to bless people 
who are poor in this world. He has helped them to trust him. So really they are rich. God will give to them a place in his kingdom. He has promised to do that for all people who love him. But you have not been kind to the poor people. You have caused them to feel ashamed. Who causes you to have troubles? It is the rich people. They are the people who want the judges to punish you. It is the rich people who speak bad things against the good name of Jesus Christ. And you are called Christians because you belong to him. Amen. And today, the verse 1 says, be kind to everyone. So I thought to myself and asked myself, what does this mean? Being kind to everyone. If you trust the Lord Jesus, then you must not value anyone more than someone on the basis of worldly standards. In other words, in order to be kind to everyone, no exception, then we need to see everyone equally. But we have our own standards and measures and values. So we think something is important. Money is important. Knowledge is important. Health is important. It, according to our standards, we value someone more than another person. So that's pointed here. Can we be free from prejudice, stereotypes, or misconception? What is important in your life? If you answer money, then you probably despise the poor. If you think educational qualifications is significant, crucial, then you cannot complain and talk back to someone who has higher educational qualifications than you. Then what does kindness mean here? As you, as you read through, you can find those words and those thoughts. These are no favoritism. Kindness here means no discrimination, no prejudice, and no partiality. That's based on our total change in perceiving others and looking at other people. We cannot judge one's faith by their outer appearances. Then why do you respect other people? Why? On what ground do we respect other people? People tend to trust others more in fancy clothes. Yes, if someone is wearing expensive brand clothes, outfits, then we think highly of them because our side is on outer appearances, wealth, or educational qualifications, as I mentioned before. This endless tendency would choke our faith. In this way, we cannot, we cannot see people equally. This means no person in high political position like Ethiopian eunuch would not stop for us. This means no one may come forward to repent their sins and be baptized by a homeless, terribly dressed person like John the Baptist. This means thousands of people will not gather anymore to listen to a mere person with no fancy resume like Jesus. If you look at verse 5, it mentions invisible faith versus visible wealth. Faith is invisible. Even though we know someone on some standards, some we can say, oh, this, this so-and-so has good faith, and he is really good in faith. On what ground? Why do you think that? What made you think that way? Maybe he attending the church regularly, or pray to God and doing QT, or, or gratitude journals, and under what circumstances and what standards, it's not possible because our ancient, our ancestors of faith is Abraham. He did none of that. Visible wealth. Yeah, wealth is visible. People, everyone can see someone is wealth, wealthy or poor. What they're wearing, what they're eating. Yes, based upon that. 
And if you look at the Bible verses, it says, He has helped them to trust Him. Trust Him. So really, they are rich. Another line says, He has promised to do that for all people who love Him. As I said, trust Him and love Him. Are we living by faith? Or living by sight? Or do we live by heart? then what do we depend on most of our time? Here the question arises, do you love God more than these? Yes, Jesus asked this question to his disciple. Do you love me more than these? If we truly love God, we may trust God and be kind to the poor people. Today, the faith and our love toward God will be appeared to our kindness to the poor people and helpless people and powerless people. Those are closely linked and related. Are you called, you are called Christians because you belong to him. If you look at verse 7. So this means our identity, who do we belong to? That defines our attitude. If we belong to God, then our attitude and action naturally comes out of it. If we don't belong to God, how can you say we can be the people of God? Our identity is based on whom we belong to. For application, I wrote, do not favor some people over others because of your prejudice, your Preconception as stereotypes or misconception. James condemns acts of favoritism here in the book of James. Often treat a well-dressed, impressive-looking people or handsome people, beautiful people, better than someone who looks shabby and ugly or looks poor. We do this because we would rather identify with successful people than with apparent failures. What does that mean? It means you want to be like the rich man. You want to be like healthy men. You want to be looked as healthy, wealthy, and educated people. So you want to be like that. That's your value. Are you easily impressed by status, wealth, or fame? And always whispering to your friends or family, oh, did you know that so-and-so person, he has that qualification, he's healthy, he's famous. Are you partial to the haves while ignoring the have-nots? The attitude, this attitude is sinful. God views all people as equals. And if he favors anyone if we ever do that then it is the poor and the powerless we should follow his examples okay please mindful of what god is looking for today's prayer for the persecuted is as i read stripped of her name for choosing jesus the north korean regime uses a brutal and widespread prison system as a fear tactic Anyone who is discovered to be a Christian in the North is quickly removed from society and sent to detention centers, re-education camps, and maximum security, hot labor prison camps. One North Korean prison camp survivor shares, the name I was born with in North Korea was the first thing they took away. Every morning, they call me for 42. So we should remember this situation and ask God to turn the hearts of North Korean leaders, including Kim Jong-un, from stone to flesh, as he did to Pharaoh. I read today's small group questions. Number one, what kind of prejudices and stereotypes do people usually have? Was there a moment when you have witnessed unfair discrimination? Please take a moment and think and share with your friend and family. Number two, a genuine Christian will have 
a changed life. Looking back your life last year, is there anything you can say a changed life? If you can change for the better this year, what would you like to change about yourself? Number three, one of the greatest barriers to salvation for the rich is pride. For the poor, bitterness can often bar the way to acceptance to salvation. That's why we may have pride or bitterness to some people. The mixture of the two would appear and block their life. Please list all the incidents that were caused by pride or bitterness. Okay, today is about pride or bitterness that choke our spiritual life. Okay, let's go to Lord in prayer, especially remember the situation in the north, that we can pray not only for ourselves, not only for our family, not only for our church, but also for people we don't know. But God's heart is there. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, as today's, today's time leads, Christians and disciples of the Lord are poor in the world, while they're rich in heaven, they're rich in faith. Lord, when the disciples of Jesus with great spiritual power try to enter the temple, they, Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I have I give to you the name of Jesus, Lord, our power, our money, our wealth and knowledge, they're nothing before God, before the power of Jesus Christ. Lord, let us bow down to you, let's worship you through our life and our decision, our perspective, so that we can glorify, we reveal the glory of the Lord over all people of the earth. Lord. Let us drop down our pride. Let us remove any bitterness embedded in our thought and our action and words. Lord, let us remove all this filth and darkness out of our heart, out of our soul, out of our life, that we can embrace the beautiful light of your love. Let us be filled with your grace so that we can shine on in the darkness we can say take heart for the lord is with us lord let us stand on your word let us walk with you all the time under all circumstances so that we can show what the faith is what is the gospel is let us show the power of resurrection even though COVID-19 and all these circumstances press all of us down and let us walk in darkness and deathly road. But as Psalm is said, even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we fear no evil because the Lord is with us. Your comfort and your mercy is with us all the time to the ends of the earth. Lord, let us stand firm on the promise of God. Emmanuel God let's have this assurance of your presence that's everything your presence is enough Christ is enough for us thank you Lord let us encourage everyone with this faith and our confirmation 
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and love of our Father God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit with everyone who hopes the coming of the Lord, who pray and ask the kingdom on earth like as in heaven, from now and forever and evermore. Amen. Amen. That ends today's word service. Welcome. And we bless everyone for this year 2021 and this week and welcome to uh, welcome everyone to bible reading club if you are able uh, available and hope to see you next week again and this completes today's worship service thank you